was my intent to finish it, but clearly I underestimated you. One would think I never learn. I made the same mistake with Azam when we first sparred. Despite being less than half my age, his strength was astounding. As is yours. Tis plain you have weathered considerable hardship. Far more even than your tales would suggest. It seems we have both learned much on our journeys. He has warmed to you. A boon to be sure. He never forgets his favorites and is ever eager to come to their aid. Quite a small place, lacking even the most basic equipment. The present may yield no clues, but we may yet try perusing the past. Have you done this before? So you cannot control the power freely. Worry not. I shall assist you. Come and stand before me. There are two ways to see the past. The first entails peering through the walls of the soul in the moment a subject is recalling a memory. The second requires no subject and is instead a process of piecing together an event from ripples left in the ambient ether. As memories are etched upon the ether of the soul, so too are they etched upon the ether of the world. In this way can history be preserved. Such memories are given to fading, however, and can prove challenging to visit. But come, let us try. Close your eyes. All units fully functional and proceeding on course towards their respective stars. Estimated time to completion of survey is 108 cycles. End of status report. Severing connection with shared consciousness. Did you hear that, Hermes? All is well. <sighs> yes. Good tidings at long last. Every step of the way, I've been reminded how little we understand creation. How the universe defies imagination. But soon we won't need to... speculate. We'll know the answers. What others live for. <laughs> Indeed. And we'll owe it all to you and your sisters. Answers we will get. Whatever intelligent beings that exist out there are bound to be vastly different from us. Diverse in form and culture, possessed of unique ways of thinking. Their conception of life and its purpose will be no exception. 
completely and utterly unlike ours. Utterly unlike? How? <laughs> I have no idea. Yet whatever answers we receive, I will not dismiss them out of hand. No, I will think earnestly on them all. And I will share them with our people, that together we may contemplate our own existence. Perhaps then our star will become a better place. Not only for man, but for all life. Meteon. Though I gave you wings to soar the heavens, I did not teach you how to walk the earth. So loath was I to bind another living being. In the course of your long journey, you will learn from those you meet, learn to walk and run and so much more. And when you return, older and wiser, we will have a celebration to mark your homecoming and coming of age both. Will there be apples, covered in syrup? <laughs> and how are you supposed to eat them? Hmm. Rather than food, perhaps... A flower. Yes. Upon your return, I will gift you a beautiful flower. So, what is your opinion? I am inclined to agree. As we had suspected, the two are somehow involved. Yet it's difficult to believe that they would deliberately seek to end all life. In light of this, I propose that we reveal your tale to Hermes himself. If he does not wish for the final days as we believe, he may well join us in pursuing a solution. Then it is settled. Let us seek out our friend with all swiftness. It would not do to let such a pure soul be blackened by tragedy. My apologies for keeping you waiting. I understand there is a matter you wish to discuss. Aye. A matter of the utmost gravity. If one can suspend disbelief. Go on then. Tell him what you told us. Who you are and why you came. Final days. The phenomena observed during these star-encompassing calamities is likely the product of a dynamous reaction. And none is more vast in the applications of this energy than you, Hermes. I must stress, that we do not believe you would desire such destruction. We come not to lodge accusations, 
but to beg your wisdom. And so, distressing though the exercise may be, I ask that you share with us your opinion on the matter, on the assumption that our visitor's tale is true. Even you, Vanar. As you say, the phenomena observed in the two calamities may both be attributed to Dynamis. Of note is the difference in its effect. In the first final days, it warped creation magics. In the second, it warped the people themselves. The key variable, I suspect, is the etheric density of the men of each age. As you know, ether, in essence, negates dynamis. Harboring high concentrations of ether, we ancients cannot readily manipulate dynamis, nor be manipulated by it. Therefore, rather than ourselves, the calamity affected our magics. In contrast, having been sundered, the people of the future are composed of but a fraction of our ether. Thus are they susceptible to the influence of Dynamis and its transformative potential. But that would explain only the mechanism, not the cause. Though perhaps... What is it? Even should it be a hypothesis, we would hear it. Dynamis is an energy put in motion by feelings. Feelings for which there must first exist a source. A source to which the victims must be attuned. One that harbors the self-same negative emotions. Elsewise it could not be the agent of such extreme change. So it wasn't the stagnation of the celestial currents. Someone or something, is instigating the star's demise. So, we've a villain on our hands after all. Any idea who or what it could be? The celestial currents comprise the outermost layer of the star's ether, encasing it like a protective sphere. According to your tale, it was where the currents were weakest that the phenomena first manifested. If the inciting factor came from without a theris, then its effects would first be seen in those locations. Greetings. Can you hear me? Do not be alarmed. I mean you no harm. I wish only to hear your words, share your feelings, know your thoughts. May we please be friends. Meteon. What is it? Executing scheduled task, suspending individual self and connecting to shared consciousness. Connection established. Commencing status report. Steady, Meteon. Steady. So scared. So lonely. The pain. It's too much. <laughs> Why? Why? Why do we... Hurt. 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 This is wrong. All wrong. 
she's gone? But how? She has altered her etheric density in order to blend in with her surroundings, an ability for avoiding confrontation. Most effective. Frustratingly so. I can't see her either. Not even a trace. Stay away. Please. This is wrong. My mistake. So please. Are you all right? In your mind? No. We only heard her speak the instant before she vanished. Of course. When communicating without words, Meteon also employs Dynamis. That would explain why you were able to hear her when we could not. Then you are our best chance of finding her. Follow her voice and try to track her down. Hindered though we may be, let us split up and search as well. We shall herd her into the shelter. I'm sorry, Hermes. I'm so sorry. If someone can hear these words, then please. Please protect them. Protect them all. Individual self suspended. Connection with shared consciousness stable. Our survey is complete. We shall now report our findings. All units safely arrived at their respective destinations. Seeking answers to Hermes' question, we attempted to make contact with the intelligent denizens of each star. Results are as follows, in order of numerical code. Enna. Traces of civilization found. Structures believed to have served as domiciles. No extant life forms detected. Dio. Ruined remnants of buildings scattered across star. 
surface of which is encased in ice. Presence of life could not be verified. Tria. Evidence of large population centers, akin to cities recovered. No extant life forms found, only their lingering essence. Tessera. Edifices surmised to be abandoned residences found. No extant life forms detected. Deadly plague or extreme environmental degradation likely to have led to mass extinction. They are all... dead. Octo. Star found in state of violent conflict. Contact successfully made with inhabitants. But deployment of weapons of mass destruction resulted in total annihilation of local population shortly thereafter. Inea. Star is a barren desert. No identifiable flora found. Bones of living beings resembling men discovered beneath sands. But determination regarding their intelligence inconclusive. Remind me, Hermes, what exactly was the question you entrusted to Meteon? I tasked her with asking what others live for, what gives their lives meaning. Did you consider what may happen if the premise of the question is flawed? To be able to answer it, one must be living and desire to continue doing so. But if Meteon finds no living beings in the course of her journey, or none who desire to live, what then? What answers would she derive from their silence? Meteon, enough! Suspend your mission, and return hither at once. Decapente. Local civilization once flourished under auspices of higher power. Said power later laid waste to civilization in fit of rage. Upon revealing this to me, Entity elected to self-terminate in lieu of providing answer to question. No other intelligent life forms found. Turning a deaf ear, are we? We are taking Meteon back to Amarot. As I understand, we will need her if we are to bring back all of her sisters. Y yes. Meteon. It isn't right, is it? It isn't right to turn away from the answer. Even if the answer is pain. Even if we aberrations must scream ourselves hoarse to be heard. <laughs> Aye. Whatever answers we find, I will not dismiss them out of hand. These words I said to you, and I will hold myself to them.
What is the meaning of this? You cannot save Mision. Not until she has finished her report. All else must wait. It's over, Hermes. In the name of the Convocation, I hereby take Meteon into custody. And setting aside the matter of your nomination, you will come with us too. We require your knowledge to assess and resolve the situation. <sighs> Meteon, I am so sorry but that I could have listened to your report in full, reflected upon its meaning, and conveyed it to others, that they might reconsider their chosen course. But I have failed, and that wish will never be realized. However, ere our fates become the province of others, I bid you tell me just one thing. Was there happiness in those distant stars? Was there a reason for living? We conducted our search as per your instructions. We scoured historical records, communed with the spirits of the deceased. Heard the final testaments of the dying. Welcomed their shadowed hearts into our own. One race had striven to create a world bereft of animosity. They renounced relationships to avoid interpersonal strife. And in so doing, brought about societal collapse. One race had renounced war and devoted itself to the enrichment of its people. They were conquered. Though they destroyed the enemy in reprisal, they could not regain their former glory. One race had concluded that finite time was the root of all woes. Aspiring to shatter its shackles, they went in search of infinity. They discovered nothing is infinite and that neither time or death can be cheated. Disillusioned, they gave up on the future and themselves. One race had discarded all things that gave rise to sorrow, hoping to have only joy. They found joy lost its savour in the absence of sorrow and lost their will to live. The worlds apart, these peoples shared a belief. The belief that they had tried their best. That they had tried to fulfill their potential with every step and success. In the course of which, they learned the truth. They would never be free of fear and sorrow, anger and despair, of loneliness 
so long as they yet lived. Even now their souls cry out for oblivion. And to this song of anguish, I lend my voice. We lend our voice. Oh, beloved mankind, shimmering jewels of beautiful affairs, rejoice, for we will free you from the cruel yoke of existence. There is no need to struggle in vain, for in nihility awaits salvation. You will know peace and serenity, and it will be we will make our nest at the edge of the universe, and there in the dark of dead worlds hoard sorrow and suffering. There we will sing, our chorus ever louder and ever clearer, that our song may reach even this ether-shrouded star. Such is the answer we have found in the stars. Such is the gift we now offer to the fairies. Who are you to decide our fate? To decree we live or die? Lost your mind? You heard what she said. She means to destroy us all, yet you'd still take her side? In the name of the star, we have discarded those creations that we deemed flawed. If we ourselves are flawed, it does not stand to reason that we too should be discarded. That is sophistry, and you know it! Perhaps it is. Perhaps I am wrong. Who is to say that you are right? Let us settle this with a determination. In my authority, as Chief Overseer of Elpis, I will make a judgment on man's fitness to exist. If he can learn to value all life and retain his will to live, even should his end be justified, he will surely find a way to avert his demise. If not, he will perish from the star. As with all determinations, provisions must be made to ensure fairness. Kairos, awaken! Memory reconfiguration system Kairos activated. Awaiting instruction. Command, universal memory alteration. Target area, Catesis Hyperborea. Starting point. Arrival of Emmett Selk of the Convocation at Propylion. End point. The present. Raise the memories of all events. And replace with a vague recollection of the following. I was here. Preparing to demonstrate the functionality of Kairos, to Emmett Selk and Hithidaeus. Meteon's shared consciousness became unstable. She and her sisters could not sustain her existence. And all 
dissipated the burst. The resultant shockwave accidentally triggered Kairos, which erased several days of memories from all present. Execute. Command acknowledged. Initializing. Three processes remaining to execution. Bravo. I dare say we would be hard pressed to make it fairer. Everything that you told us, everything that has happened, the fact we've even met, it will all be gone. Go, me too. To the edge of the universe, where none can reach you. Hermes, won't you come with me? If you were to shed your flesh, I should be able to carry you. <laughs> I will remain. As a man, I will oppose the oblivion you bring. Silly fool. Had you said yes, I would have granted you the gentlest end. for brooding. Listen well. Beyond lies a spatial confluence that connects the interior sections of this building. I will destroy the confluence and force open a way outside. When I do, you must jump through. I cannot tell you how sorry I am. Yeah. 
Too brave by half. Exemplary work, as always, and itself. What? But how? I thought the confluence was over. Over there? Yes. We were rather hoping we would. It was never anywhere but where it is now. The instant those two began making their way towards nothing, it was clear the plan was a diversion. I'm quite incapable of destroying a confluence, I must confess. A gambit brazen beyond words. Though we've grown accustomed to reckless improvision due to the antics of an incorrigible associate, Though, in the case of certain present company, incorrigible is an understatement. Honestly, I'm beginning to suspect it's a requirement for every asset. There's no time! Quickly! Even now, I do not believe your tale. I would not suffer us to walk such a wretched path. Still, if it must be said, do not squander it, the legacy I leave you. Final process complete. Executing universal memory alteration. I'm fine. Just a little tired. Can it be true? Are we the only ones left who see beauty in the world? In life? Are the stars above no more than husks of fallen civilizations? She is unimaginably distant. I feel Meteon's presence and the place where too we must go. Ere she made good her escape, I placed an enchantment upon her, one which allows us to follow her trail. She has already left the outermost bounds of Atheris and continues on her way. Given the vastness of the universe, it will still be no easy feat to track her down. But thanks to Emmet Selk and his Ladeus, all is not lost. We remember. So long as we remember, our fates remain ours to shape.
I'd like to know too. Let us ascertain the situation at Cutesis Hyperborea, where they should still be. Given the likely state of their memories, however, it would be imprudent for us to approach them directly. In which case... I am sorry, my friend. I've asked much of you this day. But may I trouble you one last time? <laughs> Argos will investigate in our stead. We will share in his consciousness and see and hear as if we were with him. Now, close your eyes and open your mind. a gaping hole in my memories. I can scarcely remember arriving here in Elpis. Forgive me. I was preparing to demonstrate the functionality of Kairos to our guests. But Meteon, her shared consciousness became unstable. And she So, that's what prompted the state of alert. And when you went to investigate, you were caught in Kairos's accidental operation. So it would seem. It's all a blur to me. Such an unfortunate accident. Oh, and what of Vena and your other companion? You went inside together, as I recall. We did? Vinar was with us. I have no recollection of it. But that there is her familiar, is it not? The fellow seems happy enough, so I think it's safe to assume his mistress is well. I haven't the slightest notion who this other companion might be, however. Ah... Well, that individual struck me as a bit different, for want of a better word. Perhaps it wasn't actually a person, but some manner of creation. Curious. I must ask Vinar about it when next we meet. Yes, yes, you do that. Now, if we may tend to Hermes, whatever this Meteon did, it seems he bore the brunt of it. Once you are fit to travel, you will return with us to Amarot. We need to make certain there are no other ill effects. Also, I am here on business of the Fourteen. We've already had the conversation, like as not, but since your toy wiped my memory, we'll have to have it again. Yes, of course, as you see fit. This Kairos, it manipulates memories through the emission of etheric waves, correct? There is a theory which holds that memories scoured by blasts of ether are restored when the soul is cleansed in the underworld. If true, then perhaps when our time comes to return to the star, we shall remember these few days we have lost. I doubt aught of interest occurred. Look forward to the revelation if you like, but I should prefer to reminisce on more meaningful moments.
Let us rest, if only for a while. After all, you and I, oh, we still have a long, long way to go.